Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Draft Countdown podcast, where myself and Shane will be giving you our five bold predictions for the 2023 NFL Draft. None of these might happen. Some of them might happen. We'll see. Um, if you also, you can read this, it'll be up on the site. My uh, five will be in print form there uh, for you also to read. So I'll start, Shane, and my first bold prediction is I think we see at least two trades moving up a minimum of eight spots in the first round. Wow. M- minimum at of eight spots. Two, uh, at, least at least two. At least two minimum of eight spots. I can see it. I can see it. You, you have any any spots of choice you feel like are most likely? I won't 11 to, to three, it. Tennessee to uh, Arizona. All right. That, that's where I got the aggregate number eight. Uh, <laughs> I could see – you know, some of the teams in the early 20s coming up into the, uh, you know, 11-12 spot, you know, for maybe an offensive tackle. We could see your Pittsburgh Steelers maybe go up into that top 10, go up mm-hmm. to around nine or so. It's, they like trade with Chicago. So maybe go up from 17 mm-hmm. to nine to get somebody like Darnell Wright or Paris Johnson Jr., somebody like that. So that's how I came up with multiple plus eight trades in the first round. What's your like first it. one here, Shane? Uh, only two quarterbacks go in the top ten, so this maybe maybe uh, is, a, is a torpedo to your <laughs> to your eleven to three spot. But uh, I think like last year, I think we're overrating the quarterbacks a bit, and I kind of see two of them falling out. I think we have obviously at number one, I think Bryce Young's going there, and number four, I think the Colts are going to take a quarterback. But I think the rest of the top 10 could pass, and we could see Tennessee at 11 uh, potentially, and maybe the Texans at 12 be the next two teams to take a quarterback. That's my bold prediction. Only two top 10 quarterbacks, which would be a stark contrast to every single mock draft that you see out there. One, right two, now. three, four. A lot of them have them going, so we'll see. Well, my other, my next bold prediction also involves quarterbacks, but none in this draft class. My prediction is we will see zero veteran quarterbacks traded for any draft picks in the 2023 NFL draft. That means no Aaron Rodgers getting dealt, no Trey Lance getting dealt, no whoever else that may be (laughs) shopped around that's a veteran quarterback. None of them get moved over the three days of the NFL draft. Oh, man. Um, Yeah, yeah. Look, it it could happen. I feel like Rodgers isn't getting done right by draft day, but that Trey Lance starting to get juicy. So we'll see. What's your next uh, bold prediction, Shane? Like I got some crap on Twitter for this, but I Keishawn Boutte, the receiver from LSU, is going undrafted. He's not going to get drafted in this class. It's bull. I'm not sure I fully believe it, but I think I think a strong possibility between. You know, the combine not going as well, him being a, a red RAS score athlete and just the off the field kind of concerns, effort concerns on the field. Uh, he, he was a, fr- a great freshman receiver, had a couple great games this past year, and that's it. I think Keyshawn Boutte is uh, overrated. My new rule of thumb has become if you're not drafted in rounds one through four and you don't play special teams, you're not getting drafted in rounds five through seven unless you're a quarterback. And if Butte doesn't get drafted in the first four rounds, which I don't think he will at this point, I th- I'm with you. I actually don't disagree with you, what you just said. I don't know that Keishon Butte gets drafted if he's not selected in the first four rounds. I mean, maybe we get a, a round six like Seth Williams a couple of years ago, but, uh, you know, that that's ugh, yuck. That didn't work out either. No. My next bold prediction here, Shane, is that – Involve trades, again, because I feel like trades are a thing. Three teams, at least three teams, will trade into the final six picks of round one. So picks 25 through 31, I think we will see three teams outside of the first round trade back into those last six picks. So you you have some eight, at least eight pick jumps, and then even more trades into the back half. I actually, which could um, also, which also could tie into the first one because we could see some eight pick jumps there. I, I guess that's fair. Um, I, I think I actually completely disagree with you on on that bold prediction. I actually think I think the this draft from like fifteen to fifty is probably it's the same, pretty similar, the same you know. Yeah. But but that hasn't stopped teams from moving up before. So 
But you 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 have some teams like Philadelphia or these teams that have a lot of draft picks but not a lot of roster spots. So they start to tighten that board up a little bit and get some of those mid-round picks to come in. That's my thought process here. We'll see. What, what's up oh, for fair. you next? What's up for you, Shane, on this one? Uh, Double-digit running backs go in the top 100. I think we hit 10 in this group. I don't know if I'll do it in my final mock draft, but I do think this running back group is deep. I think it's better – then people want to give it credit for because they discount the position. I think there's a lot of NFL teams that need a running back, maybe not a starter, but need that number two guy, need that running back by committee guy. I think we could see 10 running backs go in the the top 100 in the first two days of this draft. Um, Yeah, I think it could happen. For to get to 10, I think Kendra Miller has to be one of them. Yes. On on my board. I think he's in. I think he's in. So we got Bijan Gibbs, a chain, Spears, Charbonnet, Chase Brown. Uh, uh sure. I don't think we necessarily need Chase Brown, but yeah. Abana Kanda. Yes. Tank. Tank. Roshan Johnson. Roshan. Yeah. Kendra Miller. Who was your tenth? If it's not uh Chase Brown. Uh I think Zach Evans okay. could, could get in there. But I, I think Chase Brown. I, I think that like kind of Abana Kanda Brown, Evans, Tucker. You know, mix. And we saw like right, Tyron Davis Price last year. I think you can get a weird one too. That's true. Uh, I have nine in my top 100. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Maybe not that bold then. I don't know. Here's a bold, another position group. I'm going to go bolder than what you just did. First 40 picks, 10 defensive backs. In the first 40 picks, first 40 picks, I've got. Christian Gonzalez, Oregon, Devin Witherspoon, Illinois, Joey Porter Jr., Penn State, Emmanuel Ford, Mississippi State, Brian Branch, Alabama, Cam Smith, South Carolina, Deontay Banks, Maryland, Keely Ringo, Georgia, Julius Brents, Kansas State, and to finish it off, we always have a safety that goes higher than normal. Uh, Sydney Brown, Illinois, with that testing ahead of Antonio Johnson from Texas A&M. I actually thought you were going to go with uh, Quan Martin, the other Illinois seed. Could be. So, could, could I think mean, that could be too. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, Keely Ringo feels like the linchpin there. Yeah. He's, I think well, he's right. I think Brent's, a couple guys on that border, but it's good. Yeah. Brent's is another one I think is is maybe borderline there as well. Fair. fair. What's, what's uh, your next, uh, what's your uh, fourth bold prediction, Shane? Like people told me it wasn't bold enough on Twitter. I said that Keon White would go above Kalijah Cansey. So I'm going to take it one step further. Say Keon White, the edge rusher, D lineman out of Georgia Tech, goes above Miles Murphy, the edge rusher out of Clemson. Uh, I, I think I think teams are going to like Keon White's versatility and pass rush ability. I think it's honestly more production than Miles Murphy had in terms of getting to the quarterback. I think Keon White goes higher than people think, goes in that first round, um, higher than Murphy. Tested well. Tested Keon well. White. And people are forgetting coming into the Senior Bowl week, he was you know, at number eight overall on Daniel Jeremiah's board. If I remember that correctly, uh, he's been mocked high in the first round, often by like guys like Mel Kuyper and stuff like that. So I could see it. Uh, Miles, and this could be a discussion maybe later on uh, another time, but I'm, I'm curious as why Miles Murphy – Seems to be following a lot. I've seen it. I've seen you know mocks with him not even going in the first round. So it's it's insane. We'll talk about that in another time. My final bold prediction here. In round one, I predict we will have more interior offensive linemen, or as many or more interior offensive linemen drafted than offensive tackles. Interesting. That's that. That, that is for this to work out. We have to count Peter Skaroski as an interior offensive fine. We do. <laughs> we, we do. And on our side, not, not everybody does. So, Skaroski, John Michael Schmitz from Minnesota, Steve Avila from TCU, and Osiris Torrance from Florida all go in the first round. And that means one of Dewan Jones from Ohio State or Anton Harrison or both from Oklahoma have to fall out. Of the first round, yeah, yeah wait, which I think which, is I think Paris Johnson, Broderick Jones, and Darnell Wright, they're all locked they're in. in top 15, top 18 players. Yeah, I um, no, I mean, I think it's fair 
Steve, Steve Avila is it's still he's your guy. I, I still just don't see him going in the first, but Cole Strange did. So I, like I don't know. I, I think it could happen. But that, that's but what you feel that's about what you need. Three. I I I think the other three could definitely happen. Yeah, I feel good about the other three. The 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 I, I don't know if I, with Avila, like you said, uh, that's why I said as many. As more. many. Okay. Okay. So, so John Michael Schmitz really is the linchpin, I think. Cause I think yes. Torrance feels good at this point. So we'll see. Your last bold prediction for the 2023 NFL draft. All right. So I'm going to kind of contradict your, your DB one. Not, not really. I think they both still can happen, but uh, I'm going to say Brian branch gets drafted as a corner. So we have no safeties in the top 75 picks, zero Ooh. safeties. Zero safeties in the top 75. You're counting Brian Branch as a nickel corner. I'm saying whoever drafts him, drafts him. Same the card says nickel. corner. Okay. And the card says cornerback, and that way no safety. No one, no card says safety in the top 75. Picks. So no Sidney Brown, no Quan Martin, no Antonio Johnson in the top 75. I it, you say this, that is a da- this, this <laughs> doesn't feel like a good year for safeties. I'll say that it's not. It, that, that's what. That's why it's my last one. The, you saying the names, I'm like, oh, I don't know, uh, because I feel like one of those Illinois guys does get in. But that, I think, Just I think on it's testing happen. though, that, one, those, that both those guys tested so well. Yeah, but I could see it. I could it, see it. it it's possible. City. So that is our each of our five bold predictions for the 2023 NFL Draft. Watch this back. Pro, let's just say after night two and uh, see uh, how stupid we sounded here <laughs> or how prophetic we sounded here when we laid it all out for you. Thanks for watching this little quick video here on the Draft Countdown YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share everything out. We thanks for everybody for being fans of Draft Countdown.